Chairman Sini, distinguished speakers and guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. <laughs> well, it is indeed a great privilege and an honor for me to speak at the Hong Kong IE's National Conference on the Adopting Dispute Resolution Mechanism for the Construction Industry in Hong Kong and uh, Greater Bay Area. Uh, I would I'd like to really thank uh, Sidney for inviting me. And Sidney, he himself is an expert in this field, and he himself has been leading the HAIE uh, special com committee to pursue this very important uh, sector for Hong Kong. Okay, next page. Oh, oh. Okay. The Resolution of disputes can really be very expensive and time-consuming, sometimes causing significant negative impact on a company. And it is preferable to address all claims and potential claims as early as possible to prevent them from developing into disputes. However, when there are circumstances where disputes are unavoidable, they should firstly be handled in a constructive and collaborative way to reach early and effective settlements, while the traditional arbitration and litigation approaches should remain as last resort solutions. In Hong Kong, the construction industry accounts for about 5% of the GDP, and uh, employees account for about 8% of the total well workforce in Hong Kong. According to the Census and Statistics Department, the gross value of construction works by uh, the value of construction works by main contractors in the year 2020 totaled at Hong Kong dollar 226.4 billion. And uh, with the ever booming development of the construction industry, both in mainland and in Hong Kong, the number of construction disputes has also been observed to be on a steady rise. Construction projects are complex and revolving different skills and construction workers, and disputes between the two parties are prone to occur. During the past decade, the Hong Kong government has implemented a mediation clause as an alternative mode for settlement of construction dispute. Mediation is not the pursuit of right or wrong, but can let go of the emotions of both parties and rationally analyze the consequences. In this end, there's a ruling in mediation which can become a contract after both parties sign on it. Mediation, has, uh, mediation was introduced in Hong Kong first in uh, 1984 by the government on construction works contracts. Construction industry has been referred to as the forerunner to the current mediation development in Hong Kong. The complexity of construction contracts and subcontracts practice and operations, the great amount and variation of professional and technical knowledge skills, restricted time frame and site conditions, etc., all put and packed together develop various kinds of complex construction disputes of overlays of liabilities, leading to the extremely high transaction costs for settlement through adjudicative processes. Construction disputes as specialized disputes whereby Case management is required with the participation of expert witness from 
uh, before better justice can be achieved. The Hong Kong Mediation Code 2009 requires mediators to have specialized training and accreditation to the needs of the disputes as his responsibility to the public and to the process. Internationally and locally, mediation is a flexible means of dispute resolutions to be adaptable and customizable to meet the needs pertinent to the nature and demand of the disputes, individually and industrially. However, mediation requires the cooperation of both parties and may take a long time. In fact, the government had planned to formulate security of payment legislation, SOPL, for the construction industry and set up an adjudication mechanism to quickly resolve construction disputes. Proposed security of payment legislation for the construction industry was published in the year 2015 by the government. The cruise of this legislation is founded on a pay first, argue later method of dispute resolution where the parties must pay and adjudicate it among, according to the adjudication decision. The decision can be challenged based on the grounds as set out in the secure payment legislation in the later stage. The parties must act in accordance with a strict timetable and the adjudicator must also deliver a decision within a certain period of time. A default payment scheme in the legislation will be triggered if a construction contract fails to identify a valid payment mechanism. <coughs> Although the consultation on the ordinance was completed as early as uh, 2015, it has not yet been implemented. On the 5th of October 2021, the Hong Kong Development Bureau issued technical circular works number 6 2021. In short, we can call it just the circular, outlining the policy on the implementation of security payment, SOP, provisions in public works contract to facilitate timely processing of contract payment and to induce an inter interim mechanism for speedy resolution of payment disputes before the enactment of security payment legislation. Up to 1st of April 2022, all public works <coughs> main contracts, including design and build contracts and term contracts as well as relevant subcontracts at all tiers are subject to the contractual SOP regime. Although it is still under, uh, it is still unclear when the security of payment legislation will come into force. The introduction of the mandatory security of payment provisions in the public work contracts is certainly a significant step forward. <coughs> Hong Kong <coughs> is the mature professional legal service hub with a favorable international reputation. The online development plan for the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, GBA, has pledged strong support for the establishment of Hong Kong as an Asia-Pacific Center for International Legal and Dispute Resolution Services. <coughs> the amended regulations of the Qinghai, Shenzhen, Hong Kong Modern Service Industry Cooperation Zone of the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone came into operation in October 2020. It allows Hong Kong enterprises registered in the Qinghai Cooperation Zone to agree on the choice of Hong Kong law 
in their civil and commercial contracts. I hope the government will seek for the mainland support to extend the current measures from Qinghai to the entire GBA by actively promoting cross-border intergovernmental cooperation. Hong Kong should seize the opportunity to achieve initial results in resolving inter-regional legal conflicts. Avoiding and uh, resolving disputes requires a multifaceted approach. There will never be a one-size-fits-all response. Disputes in construction are prevalent, and preventing a conflict is better than solving one in the first place. Good project management, particularly management of the content, deadlines, causes, information, communication, risks, changes, and decision-making, and an adequate contingency provision and risk reserves are the most effective ways to reduce the frequency and intensity of claims and conflicts. Thank you very much for inviting me again you know, to this very important conference. Thank you.